The year was 1954. With their sturdy, broken-down microphones, they were headed for greatness in the American West. Jack and Ron in the morning. If you don't laugh like this, you're probably normal. The following entertainment special contains mature subject matter. Parents may consider some of the program content unsuitable for children. Parental discretion is advised. Bad boys of radio. Come on. Here's Jack and Ron. We've arrived on a Monday right here at Othello's Italian Restaurant in Edmond, Oklahoma, as we do every Monday at 1 o'clock to present you the number one video podcast in America, Jack Dam Elliott, Ron Dam Williams. What oh, what, what, what kind of great weather we're having right now. Oh, yeah. and you know what? like this, I'd really be happy. Well, it's going to be that way all week long. I think temperatures are going to be, oh, in the mid-80s and a couple of times, nice. maybe near 90. But other than that, no rain in the forecast. Now's the time for you to get all those leaves up. Everything that fall will bring to you. By the way, happy uh, happy fall to you. Hey, thanks to you, too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, got to say hi to Richard. Richard is the, whoops, my phone fell over on this little uh, thing that is stand that it sits on. Uh, but Richard is our uh, uh, engineer, chief engineer, executive producer, the guy who does all this crap. How you doing, Richard? Hey. Thing. Hey. <laughs> So good to have you. We'll be doing asinine trivia with you here, cool. here in just a little bit. Uh, thanks to Othello's for allowing us to come in here and trash his place every Monday at 1 o'clock. They open at 4 o'clock daily, Monday through Sunday. They're a seven-day restaurant, uh, and they open their, their restaurant in uh, Norman on Campus Corner as well at 4 o'clock each day. Great <laughs> Italian food. Check it out. Try Jack's herb-crusted salmon. You won't be disappointed. And also, thanks to Lily with Flash Hauler. Flash Hauler is a company she created that does incredible things, and Flash Hauler is the game changer in the moving industry. If you need to move a washer, a dryer, a sofa, an ottoman, and maybe if you need to move just a chair or two, they can take care of it for you. And hey, don't forget about a mom and dad's house, too. We'll be telling you all about that if you're a senior citizen. Or, or maybe you uh, just don't feel like moving a lot of stuff. You want to move someplace a little smaller. Uh -huh. We've got you covered. I was looking at the, the monitor here. Sure. And, and just for a moment, I was doing this because it was kind of cold. And I looked down, and I'm seeing myself. <laughs> I'm seeing uh, myself. I, I was going to ask you, are you cold or are you just doing like a Stevie Wonder yeah. thing? Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of a Stevie Wonder look there for yeah, a moment. Geez. All right. Well, anyway, it's the number one video podcast in America, as most of you know, with Jack and Ron. You know, the guys who've been around forever. I had a guy come up to me the other day. I was at a restaurant. And he walked up to me. Are you still and, alive? And he went, no. <laughs> this guy, he says, hey, I know who you are. I wanted to hand you this cup or this bag of uh, coffee, freshly ground from my coffee shop down in uh, somewhere in downtown Oklahoma City or 23rd Street. And uh, it was like E-O-V something. But anyway, man, that bag of coffee smelled so good. And I thanked him for it. Uh, great guy. And he said to me at that time, he said, I listen to you guys every day. I said, thank you. Outstanding. And I, I didn't... Uh, I didn't elaborate on the fact that we're not on every day, but I went just ahead let and just, believe his yeah, dreams. Yeah, yeah, I just said, well, maybe one day we'll you know, be back on every know, day. You know what he meant. Uh, I'd like to say uh, hey to uh, Wade, as a matter of fact, a friend of mine, a great painter, as a matter of fact. I have all the stuff that you requested as far as uh, Jack and Ron's uh, autograph, and I found a little something special in my garage I was cleaning out this, this weekend that I think would be perfect for you. I'll give you a call. If you're watching right now, I'll give you a call and, and let you know where you can come by and pick it up. That's right. good. And be sure to share this podcast with everybody you know. We're on Facebook, of course, live every week at 1 o'clock Central Time. And mm. also on YouTube. On the YouTube channel, we are The Jack and Ron Show. The Jack and Ron Show on YouTube. On uh, Facebook, it's just Jack and Ron. And we're up there right now doing our live podcast a video podcast for you and uh, hopefully you'll share yeah. it with everybody you know uh, i wanted to make mention of the fact that uh, we uh oh, we got to get to uh two tough trivia asinine trivia then i want to talk about the state fair real quick so okay, let's do bef two tough before we do that uh -huh. i gotta tell everybody don't forget if you have your own soap opera moment or something you want to say uh complain or pat on the back you can uh, call us you can do that right now 405-509-5030 that's right and you do that, and we'll we'll send you something nice. But that's five uh, four zero five five zero nine fifty thirty. Now, two tough trivia. Yeah, we're gonna get a little political here. How many first ladies have uh, uh, been born outside of the United States? 
They, they, uh, they weren't um, Americans per se. One. How many? One. Can I give you a – is this a percentage you're looking for? Or? No, you're a number. For an exact number. An, look, uh, an exact number. I'm going How with How many one. first ladies uh, – that weren't born, born here. Yeah, they were born outside of the United States. They weren't America. I say numero uno. I say senior. three. You say three. three. I go one. Both All of right. you are, well, incorrect. Now, ah, okay, we'll get to the digits? answer. Is it? Is it? Oh no, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> oh, Jack. God, We'll give you the answer here at the end of the podcast, about fifty-five minutes from right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, we got to hit Richard with asinine trivia. Trivia is so easy, it's asinine. Oh, he seems to be ready today. Oh yeah, we created this contest years ago when the sales department at the radio station would come to us and say, "Gee, Jack and Ron, we got this prize to give away. It's a half bottle of water." Yeah. Um, oh, and here's a thimble. Yeah. Here's a thimble for those who may so. So <laughs> what the what? What? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So they give us some real crap-ass prize to give away. So uh, thinking we were going to do some massive contest to make it sound like we're giving away a brand-new Cadillac Escalade, we said, no, we're going to come up with asinine trivia to make it simple for the listeners since the prize sucked. So asinine trivia, here we go, Richard. It's so easy, it's asinine. Question one, what kind of shoe, what kind of shoe does a horse wear? Oh, Ooh, horseshoe. Horseshoe is right. <laughs> Bell gets rung. Yes. Number two. <laughs> I, on what device do most people sleep? On what device? A device? A device oh. or piece of furniture. Okay. Do a most, bed. A bed, yeah. that's right. I started thinking about pillows, <laughs> sheets, no? good. springs. Well, that's something tells me that would have been foam? good as well. Okay. It's, All right, then. How about question number three and uh, the final question for you? Name the two guys who have won more broadcast awards than any other broadcasters in Oklahoma hmm. and who enjoy letting a monkey climb on their head while they play the hide the banana game while Oof. dancing the Macarena in the nude and also perform the number one video podcast in America. Jack and Rob. Hey. Got him. Beautiful. God, I'm glad you got that. Uh, yeah, the yeah. I wanted to mention the state fair. I was there Saturday night when the gunplay happened. Uh, I was there to see the Vince Neal concert. My wife was there. I was there. Uh, and my friend uh, Brent with BK was there. Uh, and uh, it was an interesting evening to say the least. All of a sudden, um, uh, the band is playing, and BK says, look at all those people kind of moving about 200 feet away from us, are kind of moving in a single file, kind of moving away from, say, the building over by the Bennett Bill, or whatever that building is. So I said, huh, that is interesting. And then all of a sudden, I, I said, BK, the band, they're not playing. I thought they had just stopped between songs. They were gone. <laughs> I said, and another guy standing right there said, Apparently, there's an active shooter in the Bennett building. I said, oh, and my wife's like, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. I said, okay, let's try to remain calm. My deal is assess the situation, stay calm, and make your way to wherever in a calm fashion. Well, all of a sudden, it's like a, a fire drill. There's people running every which every way direction. A cop comes by me carrying a rifle and says, looking for a guy in a white shirt. And I said, I'm wearing a white shirt. Not you. you know. And it's, <laughs> anyway. So we, t we take off, we start moving, and then all of a sudden people are saying something about he's down there or he's coming this way. So we turn around, and in a split second of trying to turn around and run, my wife trips, falls, hits her head, her nose. She's got a black eye, her nose is cut up, her head has got a lump the size oh, of a golf man. ball. Yeah, so we go into the safety room at the Sorry fair. Sorry about that, Cindy. Get into the safety Jeez. room at the fair, and uh, they said, well, the EMSA people aren't here right now because they're evacuating the fair because of gunplay. Okay, well, we get right to the, we got our vehicle parked right there by the offices anyway. So we get to the vehicle, we go to the ER, and the ER, they send in, we go to Mercy, and the ER lady comes in, she's a PA, that's not a doctor, but a physician's assistant, comes in and goes, well, I see you, you know, you fell, you hit yourself, um, and her head's all skinned up, and she's got, you know, scrapes and bleeding, and she says, well, what you need to do is go home and put Vaseline and ice on it, and I thought, it's Mercy Hospital, do you guys not have ice? Do you not have Vaseline? Anyway, I didn't ask. I said, okay, we'll leave, and then we'll go home and take care of it, which is what we did. And so now mm -hmm. the black eye increased because you know how wounds tend to um, develop fuller after a, an injury. So anyhow, that's what happened. That what? was our Saturday night. What an adventure. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> my wife's got big bruises, and uh, she's, it looks like you know somebody, she was in a car wreck or somebody hit her with a baseball bat. But well, see. She'll you, survive. You, you should have been holding her arm or, or, I try, or I, running you, with her instead of running in I front was, of her. I was with her. She <laughs> tripped right next to me and oh. bam, went down. Oh, you, you, and I pulled her up. Oh, and okay. I pulled her up after she hit the All right. I just make sure you were being the hero yeah, I, I know you've been in the It was just a bad night. Yeah. It was one of those bad nights after all. Right. 
If she hadn't fallen, everything would have been fine because we got out of there. And only, I say only, but one person was shot, which is not good at all. But uh, it was not a, uh, what would you call a uh, random shooting or some guy just get the shooting gun everybody. in the fair? Yeah. That's all I have to say. Now, I know, I, and here's my thought on that. Everybody said, well, what do you think about that people getting a gun in the fair? You know what? In a huge venue like that, that many people, there are always going to be somebody who manages to circumvent the system and manages to get something in there oh, they man. shouldn't have. All you have to do is go to the fence and have somebody throw your firearm right there you over go. the fence. Uh, don't ask me how I know. I'll tell you, <laughs> something else that, that that really got on my nerves. Okay, what was th- that? This, this weekend. And, and it's a little bit political, so, you know, get ready for it. Oh, my. Ryan Walters, he's the uh, Secretary of Education for the state of Oklahoma. That's what they tell me. Uh, He was in Washington uh, talking about Confucius education. Oh, I thought maybe he went there to get a better haircut. Okay, uh, go ahead. (laughs) Well, I told you who wears those type of haircuts, man. (laughs) See, Guile. Anyway, at the same time, talking about uh, not receiving money from China for education. We don't receive money from China Where for education. Where did they education. come up with that concept that we get money from China Maybe for education? Maybe that was his excuse for flying up there on our dime uh, on, a, on a flight. But I'm, I I'm listening did, to it. Did we pay for him to go there to testify or whatever he was doing? I don't know. Oh, I don't think anybody knew Congress he was going or, until yeah. he showed up. Pretty quiet. All right. So, Ryan, uh, here, here's something I would love for you to work on, aside from going to uh, Washington talking about receiving money from China. It's about money. It's about money that goes to the colleges and universities in the state of Oklahoma. According to what I have heard and what I have seen, the money that comes in should be divided equally among the colleges and universities. Right. Here it is, Langston University, biggest black college or minority college, however you want to, because because they do have white students going there. Uh, they discovered that Langston has been screwed, that's right, I said screwed, out of about half a billion dollars in funding. Let me say it one more time, Mr. Ryan Walters. Half a billion dollars in funding that they should have gotten but did not get, and they are going back over 30 years. Now, I look at that and say I think that is a way more important than going to, to Washington to talk about non-existent Chinese money. And a word to all of the black leg- legislators who are at the state capitol, aren't you supposed to sort of be looking out? You didn't know this? You, you, you didn't, you, and if, if you knew, why didn't you do something? But well, I since guess, nothing was done, I guess you don't know. Why didn't you know? My que- my question would be, okay, it took place over a 30-year period. Yeah. If it was over one or two or three or four years, I'd say, well, okay, oversight. 30 years? Yeah. Who's watching the store, man? Who's who's watching the door? You know, and and sort of figure out where did the majority of, of the funds go and what type of explanation can be given as to why it wasn't as it was intended. Everybody gets an equal share, equal share. Half a billion dollars. A lot of money. This university, and they talked to some of the students and they were talking about some of the, uh, sometimes you have hot water, sometimes you don't. The facility is not what it could be and doggone it what it should be when you look at all the money that they were supposed to get but did not receive. I want to see some type of investigation. We have enough, we have a number of television stations in town who pride themselves on uh, being for us, having our back and everything else. Yeah, have have have, uh, have Langston's back on this one, would you? And find out what the heck is going on. For 30 years, there's a lot of head turning. I didn't see that money go there. I didn't see that money go there. Anyway, I, just, I had to get that off my chest. All right, got to say hi to pissed me off. Hi to Gary Thompson who's watching today. Is Gary the only one? I think my wife is watching also. My wife. Yeah, she's uh, the only one I have over here. What's that? She's the only one I have. 
over there. Yeah. yeah, I got my wife and Gary Thompson to watch it. We, for some reason, the algorithms or whatever it is with Facebook never really include everybody who's viewing the podcast. I don't get it. Richard doesn't get it. Uh, we don't understand what's going on with Facebook. But there will be people who say to me, hey, I watched, the, uh, I watched your live Facebook presentation the other day. Well, your name never showed up. It's, it's, it's a weird deal on Facebook. I don't get it. All right, I got something else I wanted to mention here real quick, and it's probably big news for a lot of you. Vanna White got a raise. Vanna White from Wheel of Fortune got a pay raise. For mm -hmm. 18 years, she has had the same measly salary. 18 years, she's had the same salary of $3 million a year. Three well, that's not a bad, not bad for spinning for, letters. Inflation for, yeah. for, for walking inflation. across the the, the stage, stage and touching yeah. the button. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so now she's going to be working now that she signed a new contract with Pat Sajak up until the time that he retires and steps away from the big wheel, and then she'll also be working there through the twenty five twenty six season. Uh, when that takes her into the season With where you. Ryan Seacrest joins him. Your buddy. Your buddy, your yeah. friend, your pal. Oh, oh, by the way. Does that guy not have something else to do? I oh, mean, he's, do, he's done it all. Uh, one other thing you were talking about, she's getting a, getting a pay raise. Uh, Pat's leaving. She signed on for two more additional years. Two. Two years uh, at the increased salary. And you know what? What's what? the increased salary, though? I haven't heard. Uh, I'm thinking around $5 million. That's pretty good money. I'm, for, I'm thinking around five, you know, five million. I've been to uh, one of those screenings or what? Not the screening, but the taping of that deal. I've been to the uh, studio and all, but I didn't stay because when you go to a taping of those shows, you have to sit through five because they'll do five shows in a day and come back and do five more the next and five more. Pretty soon, at the end of two weeks, they're done with shows for the next two months and or four months or whatever it is, and then they're off the rest of the time. So she's still getting paid all that money, just like Pat Sajak. After they've shot five shows a day and you've got 20, 30 shows in the can, well, they're, you know, that's, that's tw all those weeks where the shows that are done yeah. and you're still getting paid to stay home. It's, it's an impressive deal. But don't, I, don't forget the, her access. I'm, I'm not saying they'll give them to her, but she might be, uh, maybe can buy them. Access to all of the clothes that she wears each and every day. Oh yeah, I'm sure oh, it's uh, something that they lease out, and you know they, <laughs> and then they give a little mention on there. You know, Vanna White's wardrobe provided by, you know, Walmart uh -huh. or whoever, um, <laughs> provided by Goodwill or whoever. Stop, uh, all right, stop. I got to mention this too, real quick. A uh, new list came out about weird dating requirements. Some people have interesting dating requirements. You know, you meet somebody or you talk to them online, and you want to possibly go out on a date, but you have requirements. Here's some stuff that I saw that I thought was really interesting. Several people say the person they're going to date has to snore because snoring is so cute. It is. <laughs> okay. Good they, luck to you. They also ask that the person they're about to date does not have a name close to a family member, like your mom. If your mom's name was Jill and you're a guy, you probably don't want to date a girl named Jill. You know, same thing with anybody else, your dad, your sibling, or whoever. What difference does that make? I don't, I don't know. It's just get, people, people have yeah. a weird proclivity about that. <sighs> okay, here's another one. I thought this was interesting. Uh, females say no flip flops on dudes and no backward hat wearing guys. Okay, all right, guys, take the damn ball cap and put it forward, or just don't get, don't wear it at all. Uh, uh, or stay away from that person. Yeah, she sounds weird. And here's one last one for you. And I tend to agree with this. No politics. Oh, man. It, you know, it's good to care. It's good to have an opinion. And it's good to vote. But if your political party is a part of your identity, it yeah. is a hard no with a if, lot of people. If, if you want to find you something about. to talk about, there's showbiz, sports, and all kinds of different things. But politics, people, you know. A big topic it, right yeah. now, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Thank there you, you go. very much. Talk about that. Uh, I mean, there's so much you can, you can talk about. Deion Sanders, okay? Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, the guy that has revitalized the sport of football in Colorado, you know, they're, they're selling all kinds of stuff. Their commercials are, are, are prime this and prime that. Uh, it, it's, it's, Coach it's Prime, weird. man, yeah. yeah. So it's... Whew. That's pretty good. Now, something else, I'm glad, get, glad you brought that up. We were talking about football. Uh, you know, fights have been increasing in stadiums, or at least the reporting of them. Well, 
brings up which stadium is most dangerous? Do you know which danger, uh, I'm stadium saying is most dangerous? One in San Francisco or one in Detroit? That would be my two guesses. Cincinnati. Okay. Uh, you were half right. San Francisco. And I'm sorry, Richard, you were 100% <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Cincinnati's uh, filled with nice people, by the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Sooners enjoyed them this weekend. Yeah, they did. Yeah, well, they were kind enough to let the Sooners win a game. How about that? That's how nice the people of Cincinnati yeah, are. Yeah, now we're talking about dangerous stadiums. Right. A lot of times it has to do with where the stadiums are located. But anyway, all of that and more. Denver Broncos. That's the, the worst one? The Denver Broncos have the most dangerous stadium, followed by the Seahawks, the Lions. Vikings and Chiefs. Wow. Now, as far as uh, the stadium for the most violent crime, Detroit is I number knew. one. Detroit. I yeah. mentioned that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, growing up in Chicago. Oh, oh, we, that's not all. Oh, who? The stadium where the most fans have been victims. AT&T or home of the Dallas Cowboys. Wow. There you have it, folks. Well, I think you're a victim just having to buy a ticket to a Dallas Cowboys game. Look at the price. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. But, but but look at all that art you get to see when oh, you walk sure. around. How beautiful and, is that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that that's uh, it's helping you. That uh, enlightens it's enlight you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure it's, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. they're kind of bringing you into a new culture. All right. Um you know, going to uh, Chicago hockey games years ago, it used to be at Chicago Stadium, which was not exactly in the best neighborhood. Uh, man, I don't know how many people ran victim to whatever, car thiever. We used to park, and you'd have to pay so much to park, and then you'd pay some kid five bucks to watch your car to, to kind of make sure that your car stayed from being, you know, the wheels ripped hey, off or whatever. Who's watching the kid? That's just it. The whole <laughs> thing came down to, okay, as long as you're paying the kid, He's not going to strip your car. Neither is his brother because his brother's in on it. So we, we used to always have to pay some kid to watch the car <laughs> after you paid for parking. It was, boy, that was one dangerous now, Who had that place. parking lot? Unless the kid was the relative or son or whatever of who owned the parking lot. Probably. You want yeah. some money? Go out there and hustle out there and make you some money. All I know is it was one hell of a neighborhood down where Chicago Stadium was located for the uh, Chicago Blackhawk hockey games. I think... They built the United Center now, and I believe they play there, which is probably a little safer. Well, um, you know, we're also uh, getting ready to, to do something with uh, the Paycom. Uh, Going to build a new place. Yeah, a, was, that nine, was that $9 million or $900,000? Oh, it's $9 million for sure. That's what it's I want to do. $9 million or $900 million. No, yeah. it's, I think it is $900 million. Nine hundred million? Yeah, uh -huh. that's pretty expensive. Yeah. That's all I know. Yeah, well, I, I want to see some championships, okay? <laughs> That'd be giving nice. You, you're giving you this big stadium. Hey, big arena. I, I want to see some bigger acts come in, you know, as far as uh, concerts and stuff. That's and, what they're promising. And, and I want. Uh, That's what they promise. Yeah, well, well, we'll yeah, see. okay. They, they promise all even, kinds of things. I, I was about to say, it's not, they haven't put down brick one yet. All right. Um, one last mention about the uh, State Fair because there were a number of people who said, well, they need more police presence at the State Fair. I'm telling you what. There were cops everywhere the whole time. I went to the fair four times this year. I talked to police officers everywhere on the way in, inside, outside, everywhere. Talked to different police officers. They had a huge police presence there. So you can't say they don't have police presence at the uh, state fair. It's phenomenal how many officers are there, how many, as they say, boots on the ground there are. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not because they don't have police presence. That It's just, you know, some knucklehead. Gets his wild hair idea that he can sneak a gun in or have somebody throw one over the fence, like you said. All right, we got to get to some audio here. Oh, by the way, we got a whole ton of crap coming up on this show. Uh, we've got uh, email, Roy the Movie Guy, News of the I'll Be Damned, Tracking Showbiz Report. Come on, you know what I'm waiting on. Dumbass joke of the day. Nope. Uh, Tribon. Nope. Oh, we've got the Jack and Ron Sunkiss TV commercials. Both of them. Two of them coming up here in just a little bit. First, audio. This is kind of cool. Comedian Dennis Reagan talks about going shoe shopping. I thought this was a cool piece of audio. Listen to Dennis Reagan. You ever go to Payless shoe store? Yeah, I mean, they're okay. They're okay if you go in the morning when it's still sort of organized. But if you go in the afternoon, it looks like the Three Stooges had a shoe fight in there. There's lids and boxes and shoes just thrown all over the place. You could walk out with a new pair of shoes on. Nobody would notice or care. 
I prefer like Foot Locker. We got to point to the shoe up on the wall. Yeah, hey, I like this shoe here. Do you think you just go in the back room and screw around for about 20 minutes? <laughs> Last time the guy comes out from the back room and he's got two boxes and he comes up to me and says, I don't have a size 10, but I have an eight and a half and an 11. Really? Well, I'm pretty sure the eight and a halfs will hurt my feet. Because last time I got eight and a halfs, both my feet hurt constantly. <laughs> maybe I could get the elevens and stuff newspapers up into the toes. Or maybe I could buy those tube socks over there that say they fit sizes six through twelve. <laughs> and just flop the unused portion underneath my foot. Would that be a recommendation, Mr. Referee? <laughs> just blow the whistle twice. The answer is yes. I like that Mr. Referee, because those guys at Foot Locker all wear the referee jerseys. Yeah. And when you go to get a shoe, I like that one up there. You know, the, you point to it, and they have to go to the back room. And, like, it always takes them 15 minutes, right? <laughs> and it's like he says, go screw around in the back room. And then they come out, and he's like, right, you know, they'll come out with two or three boxes. We didn't have that style of that color, but I've got this one. It's pink. Yeah, and you're like... Huh? Well, well you don't have the, that style because yeah. then stop showing it. Yes. Stop advertising it. Take it off the damn wall. Thank you very much. All right, we got to take a quick commercial break. Then we're coming back with all that other stuff we promised. Email Roy the Movie Guy, Jack and Ron Sunkiss TV commercials, mm. News mm -hmm. of the I'll Be Damned. Oh, and an audio clip of years ago when Kelly Ogle with News 9 came in to visit with Jack and Ron at the radio station. What a brave guy he was. It's all coming up. <laughs> Hang on. We'll take that break and be right back. Hey Jack, hey Kay, I need some wings. Are you guys up there? Affirmative. Your backup is cloud-based. It's all on the cloud nowadays. That's funny. But do you guys have the wings? Winger, Jack. Winger. Winger. Hey, they had a couple of big hits back in the 80s, remember? Winger, big hair. Great wings don't just fall from the sky. They come from Louie's, where we're preparing food fresh daily. Come try one of our great new sandwiches. Or wings with any of seven delicious sauces. Louie's, we're in your neighborhood. We've got this down to a science. Over. Yeah, we're just not up here winging it. Hey, Al, I thought we were meeting at Othello's. Hey, Jack, I am at Othello's. Well, I'm looking around, and I don't see you. Well, wait, are you at Othello's in Edmond? No, I'm at Othello's in Campus Corner in Norman. Oh, great. Well, fortunately, both Othello's have great Italian food. They sure do, and I'm having the baked ziti. Ooh, I'm having chicken marsala. Let's continue with the meeting. Yeah, sure thing, over the phone, but I need one thing. What's that? Uh, your credit card number, because you're buying. Othello's Italian Restaurant on Campus Corner in Norman and in downtown Edmond. You bought it online, and now you need to haul that big couch. Flash hauler it. Bought a washer or dryer and need to transport it from the seller's location to yours? Flash hauler it. Have office furniture to move across town? Flash hauler it. Car breakdown and you need a tow? Flash hauler it. Anytime you need furniture or appliances moved or need a tow, Flash hauler it. Haul it, tow it, deliver it with Flash hauler. Download the Flash hauler app free. Do it now. Flash hauler. You bought back to us, okay? It's haul it. It's it's Jack and Ron. You can haul it. You can move it. You can ship it. You can do whatever the hell you want with it. If you call Flash Hauler, go to flashhauler.com. F L A S H O L R dot com. They're the great uh, sponsors of this program, and they're the uh, you know the guys who have really pretty much changed the moving industry. They're the game changers in the industry. They'll move stuff for you, even on a day. Any day, for that matter, if uh, you've gone to a big box store, you bought a sofa, they say, well, we can deliver it, but it's going to be a week before we can get it there. Contact Flash Hauler. They can usually do it within a few hours. They have drivers, trucks, everywhere. Their, uh, their people are all over the state of Oklahoma, and it's almost like Uber, where they move people from place to place. They move furniture place to place, and now they've also hooked up with Mom and Dad's house. Oh, Mom and Dad's house. Look, are you downsizing, Mom and Dad? You got those kids out of the house? Finally. Anyway, and at the same time, or you want to move to some senior living where you can kind of kick back with those who maybe have something in common with you, well, Flash Hauler can help you because they and mom and dad's house are working together. Hey, maybe you need to sell your house first. Yeah, they can help you with that. Your headaches about moving, you know, too much stuff. Well, yeah, they can help you with that too. What about making repairs before you try to sell your home? You know, they got you covered. Oh, yeah. And let me tell you something. And if you need storage, uh, they have storage solutions in uh, partnership with units and portable storage and all of that. They've got you covered. Look, if you want to change the neighbor that you're looking at across the street by moving, 
the flash hauler can help you. And don't forget about mom and dad's house as well. Yeah, flash hauler, great organization, great company. Been a longtime sponsor of this podcast. Great people, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. I've had a bunch of people come up to me and say, hey, I use flash hauler to move a washer and dryer, or I had to move an entire household of furniture. Uh, what you do is go to the website, flash hauler, F L A S H O L R, F L A S H O L R dot com. Check out Flash Holland no matter what you're moving. Well, All right. Problems out there, dude. I know people have troubles. People have questions. People have issues they're dealing with, and they need answers. So who do they go to? Dr. Phil? Hell no. They come to people who have an answer. <laughs> Jack and Ron. And we have that email for you. Dear Jack and Ron, my husband has a gambling problem. He will bet on anything. Sometimes he wins, but mostly he loses. And now my son is saying, Hey, I bet you this, or I'll bet you that. Now, hubby even tries bets to get sex. All I right. need your help. Now we're talking. Well, you know, she said he mostly loses. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, that yeah. I can see that, too. Uh, look, there are organizations. You, They have them at all the casinos and things of that nature uh, where you can call them or have him to call, and he can get some help as far as, as gambling is concerned, okay? And... Uh, uh, and on the sex, are you losing on purpose? You, 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 never mind. Uh, there you have it. <laughs> All right. There you have it. Just one of the many emails we receive on a weekly basis. Uh, by the way, if you ever want to call in a question or have a, a comment uh, or simply want to share a soap opera moment with us, you can go to area 405 509 5030. That's right. Area code 405. Go ahead and call it right now just for the hell yeah. of it because it's a recording. Yeah. It won't be like you'll have to actually interact with somebody. Yeah, maybe there's money that you're looking for, like we're looking for the money that uh, should have been going to Langston University. Uh, maybe you have some questions as well. Hey, if we don't have the answers, we can sure contact the right people who can find out. Go to area code 405-509-5030. All right, we've got to get to um, uh, Roy the Movie Guy. Roy the Movie Guy, is he with us today, Richard? Yeah? Yep. All right, let's check in with Roy and see what movies are on the docket for today. Yeah, Roy. There you are, Roy. Opening up this weekend at the box office. The top five movies this past weekend, nothing made over $10 million. Number one, again, was The Nun 2 with $8.4 million. Number two, Expendables 4 with $8.3 million. A Haunting in Venice, $6.3 million. Equalizer 3 with four point seven, million. And finally, at number five, Barbie with $3.2 million. Now let's talk about what's opening up this weekend at the box office. We have three new titles. The first one we'll start with is Saw X, starring Tobin Bell, Michael Beach, Shawnee Smith, Stephen Brand. Hoping for a miraculous cure, John Kramer travels to Mexico for a risky and experimental medical procedure, only to discover the entire operation is a scam to defraud the most vulnerable. Armed with a newfound purpose, the infamous serial killer uses deranged and ingenious traps to turn the tables on the con artists. Rated R, with a runtime of 1 hour and 58 minutes long. Up next we have Paw Patrol, the Mighty Movie, starring the voice talents of Kim Kardashian, Chris Rock, Kristen Bell, James Marsden, and Taraji P. Henson. The Paw Patrol pups magically gain superpowers after a meteor strikes Adventure City. However, things take a turn for the worse when Humdinger and a mad scientist steal their powers and turn themselves into supervillains. As the team springs into action to save the city, Sky soon learns that even the smallest pup can make the biggest difference. Rated PG with a runtime of 1 hour and 35 minutes long. And finally we have The Creator. Starring John David Washington, Gemma Chan, Ken Watanabe, and Benedict Wong. As a future war between the human race and artificial intelligence rages on, ex Special Forces agent Joshua is recruited to hunt down and kill the Creator, the elusive architect of advanced AI. The Creator has developed a mysterious weapon that has the power to end the war and all of mankind. As Joshua and his team of elite operatives venture into the enemy occupied territory, they soon discover the world-ending weapon is actually an AI in the form of a young child. Rated PG-13 with a runtime of 2 hours and 13 minutes long. And that's a look at what's opening up this weekend at the box office. All right. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks. Okay, Roy. Paw Patrol. And he says, the voiceover talents of Kim Kardashian. 
the voiceover talents of Kim Kardashian. You could take the guy working over there on the street right now who's painting lines, and he's probably a better voiceover talent than Kim Kardashian. Kim Just, does, she does have an iconic well, voice. she got a name, but I mean... A very big you name. Wouldn't, you wouldn't <laughs> consider her to be somebody who has worked in the voiceover and voice acting industry for 30 or 40 years like some of the professionals that do that on a professional basis. She's no, on TV granted. for over a couple of decades. Yeah, but I did not as a voiceover talent. Yeah. 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 Not, not as a voiceover <laughs> talent, though. Yeah. Uh, no, by no, the way, I'm just joking. we got to say hi to John Bennett, who always calls in yeah. and says, woo-hoo, well, thanks. And uh, Chandra Tucker is checking us out as well. bunch of other folks, let us know you're watching. Type something into us on the uh, talk back here on the uh, Facebook page. Hey, and don't forget the phone number, man, 405-509-5030, if you want some uh, more of a direct contact. All right, here's what we promised you. Both of the Jack and Ron sun-kissed commercials from years mm. ago. We did these probably 20 years ago, uh, 20 years ago at least. Mm. Uh, we'll play one, then we'll take a quick little uh, scurry and then play the second one. But uh, here's sun Kiss commercial number one. You want to see those? Ron plays Granny. I play Jeb <laughs> or Jed. Yeah, well, <laughs> you got to check this out. Watch this right now. Kiss made Granny want to dance. Drink your juice. So, did, did, did Sun Kiss used to be a juice? Yeah, it still what is. It still is. is. What happened to the audio there at the end? I'm, I'm lost all the audio there. Did you? Oh no, it, was, it played throughout the whole thing. Did it? Did? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, that, no. Well, that, that didn't sync up. We, oh, it wasn't sync. No, it wasn't synced up. Ah, yeah. Okay, but so but we do have another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Now this one was was for those who don't know. Jack was able to slide in five minutes before they turned on the lights to shoot the commercial. I had to get there two to three hours ahead of time for makeup. Oh, makeup and. I tell you, they and they they padded me and they put me in a dress. It was a good look. And, uh, <laughs> Here we and go. It's uh, unbelievable. You'll see for yourself. Go ahead. Well, we're here in the kitchen with Granny, and Granny, from what I understand, there are now two ways to enjoy the great taste of America's favorite orange juice. That's right, honey. It's Sunkissed New Country Style. Mm. Has more pork with a great taste of Sunkissed. Here, check it out. Well, you know, it looks more like fresh squeeze. Tastes more like fresh squeeze. Makes Granny want to dance. Sunkissed frozen orange juice and juice concentrates. Enjoy the great taste of Sunkissed, including new country style with more pulp. More so pulp. <laughs> yeah, we, so we did those two commercials years ago, probably 20, 25 years yeah. ago. And, uh. A lot of people have said they, they always wanted to see it because they mentioned, hey, we've heard you guys talk about these, but we've never seen them. So there you go, both of them, back yeah. to back. Uh, we're going to hold on to those. Uh, uh, they hated for the I don't know, dirt. Oh, we are going to hold on to I, them. I guess we'll hold uh, on to boy, them. By the way, <laughs> got to say hi to my friend Arjun. Arjun is watching today. Thank you, Arjun, for checking in. Appreciate it. we got to get to some more audio. Uh, this is the time. Oh, this is interesting because during the course of our careers, on commercial radio hmm. uh, while making every radio station we worked for number one in the market. Uh, we would often uh, have local newscasters join us, local TV newscasters, to discuss upcoming special news stories, uh, their particular TV stations were going to air. It was a teaser, basically. And on this particular occasion, Kelly Ogle from News 9 joined the fun and the stupidity and asininity of the Jack and Ron radio show. Here's Kelly joining us. Kelly Ogle, News 9, is uh, in studio with us. Uh, you guys got a lot of big stories you've been working on. Yeah, this is a neat story tonight. I, quite frankly, I'm anxious to see it because I want to know more about this. We got a story coming on tonight called The Craving Killer, and it's for people who are hooked on hard drugs, and uh, instead of going through months and months of detox and rehab... I never believed in that anyway. They mm. put them, they put <laughs> them under and flush their system with these chemicals, and in an hour and a half, it is supposed to remove the cravings. That's what I heard Keith Richards went through. Is that amazing? It's incredible. Yeah, no. 
Now, now, something that easy, that revolutionary. Can't work, right? Uh, well, you know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it, it, it can. Yeah, because, right. you know what? Uh, we definitely uh, need to, you know, we can do with a few less crackheads. But any side effects? Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, that's what we're going to find uh, out. Uh, right? I, I'm teasing the story, but at the same time, I'm anxious to see it because I haven't yeah. seen it yet. And in uh, an hour but, and a half, they run something through your system? Right. What right. is it, like a full blood transfusion or something? <laughs> Drano, How they, they just flush it, flush out. I don't, it out. I don't know what all they run through there, but they run chemicals through, and, and, and it removes the physical cravings. You know, the, the, the other side of it is the psychological part, you know, obviously, yeah. that you have to deal with after right. that. But the physical part can be so difficult for some people to overcome. Can they do that for those who uh, smoke cigarettes, too? I don't know. Because that'd be good, out, wouldn't it? Guess, How about yeah, heavy yeah. drinkers yeah. like us? Can I don't think do there's it? any hope. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> yeah. Nah, besides, we like drinking too much to give that up. You know, you got to have something. You got to have something Man. to fall Flush your back system in. every night. Don't yeah, you? you gotta take something to take the edge off. Yeah, yeah. See, this I, I'll, I'll have to find out. Any idea how long they've been doing this? This, this it's, has been there. it's very new. I mean, I think it's, you were saying Keith Richards had it done. I've made that up. Oh. He, he did it. From what I understand, he did have a blood transfusion. He, he did the full blood transfusion. That's what turned in that healthy shade of gray that we've yeah. seen. So good. That's yeah. why he looks so good today. <laughs> uh, there you go, uh, Kelly Ogle joining Jack and Ron way back uh, at the radio station. Now, here's something. I haven't heard anything else about that. I haven't either. Yeah, the, the a full hour, flush, hour and flush and a half, out yeah. and get rid of it. I haven't heard a thing about it. You would think with the proliferation of drugs that it we have. It's probably too that, effective. To There's, no effective yeah. There's no money no in money that. There's no money in that, Ron. <laughs> you know that. There's no money in that. It's the, yeah. the real money is in the comeback. You know, oh man, he's hooked on this. He's hooked on that. Fentanyl, whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah, the come. You got it. You know, yeah. There's it'll no, come back. So you need to come in yeah. next uh, in, in a couple of weeks. And two weeks after that, and so forth, until your body just and then you know what 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 what's going on. Anyway, I would I would hate to think that it did not exist. I'm hoping that story turned out to be as real as it can be because drugs, big 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 huge problem, not only in Oklahoma City and Oklahoma, but the entire country. So, uh, and that you know we have we have to call them. Let's call them and find out, man. That had to be a story that ran at least 15, 20 years ago when we were doing our radio show and Kelly joined us to talk about it. And yet I'm like you. Whatever became of that particular process yeah. that supposedly flushed out the drugs? Whew, we'll have to call and find out. By the way, we've got to say hi to Lawrence Larson. Lawrence is watching today, as well as a whole bunch of other people joining us on our Facebook page. Be sure to share, share your Facebook page with everybody you know. Grandma, grandpa, friends, relatives, your pet monkey, whoever, and let them know that we are here. And remember, too, we are also on YouTube on The Jack and Ron Show on Yay. YouTube. All right. Got to get to what we refer to as news of the I'll be damned. All right. Here's one for you. We don't know exactly what this lady was thinking, but I almost wish every delivery driver cared about my order as this much. 33-year-old Whitney Moffitt drives for DoorDash in Amarillo, Texas. She went to pick up an order at Wingstop last week, but it wasn't ready when she got there. It's not clear how long it had been or how long she was waiting, but she got so annoyed, she apparently decided to go grab the order herself and walk back into the kitchen. Uh, they told her to leave, get out of the kitchen, and it sparked a fight. Police say she physically attacked the store's manager. She continued attacking him as he tried to escort her out the door. And an off-duty cop just happened to see it. Uh, she got into well, a bit of a melee with the cop, too. Uh, she's facing charges for assault and resisting arrest. No word on how long the DoorDash customer had to wait for their wings. But, you know, that's really commitment there. I if that got tip a, was worth it. You've got a DoorDash person who's that committed that they're going to go in there and fight for your wings. That's not, no, 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 that's not wise. Why not go in and ask about the wings first, then go ahead and start a scuffle? Maybe that's why, the way to why, do it. Yeah, I, I would think that's, that, that would be the perfect See, way. See, that better. seems like the civil way to do it, but there's no <laughs> civility in this world anymore. Look around you for crying out loud. I'd rather not. <laughs> People are out of their it's, minds. It's scary, man. I'll tell you, it really is. All right, we got one more uh, audio clip for you real quick, a Jack and Ron soap opera moment. Uh, you know, that soap opera moment thing we did for years on radio, which made the number one station, wherever we worked, it made the station number one uh, when we were uh, broadcasting mm -hmm. on commercial radio. This is a short one, uh, but this lady calling in with the story also happened to have been at one time featured on the Oprah Winfrey show uh, just a year or two prior 
uh, sharing the story. And then she called in to share it with us. Here she is talking to us and getting her specific moment in the spotlight. It's Jack and Ron's soap opera moment. He had sex with my mama. Why? All right, Jane, anytime you're ready, we're ready. All right. Well, actually, this is a soap opera moment that was on Oprah a couple of years ago. I um, had been with my boyfriend for eight years. We'd been engaged a year and a half, got married, and two weeks later, I found out he was having an affair with the girl who threw a wedding shower. Sweet. Uh, I know it. Awesome. Because he was having fun. So wait a minute. You were together eight years. Eight and then, years. And then engaged, and then got married, and two weeks later, you found out. How yeah. How did you find out he was doing her? He came home and said so, basically. Why the hell would he go? Why would he? he, why he said, would by even, the way, I think I made a mistake, and I've been seeing Tina, and that was it. So let me ask you this now. Was was he doing Tina before you guys got married? Yeah, she was my mountain biking partner. So it's uh, been going on a little while, apparently. Yeah, I guess you wasn't just mounting that bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much it. Soap opera moment. That mm. appeared on Oprah prior to the time she actually called mm, in the soap mm, opera mm. moment to us. Wow. See, that's so why a lot was... of women don't like to have a lot of female friends. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> yeah. and a lot of women don't like to have female friends who are really attractive. You know, yeah. usually uh, an attractive girl, and I mean, and I'm just generalizing here, yeah. don't get, you know, but, you know, don't go off the rails on you, me. But... You want me to hand you the shovel? Let me, because you're digging you, a hole. Let me hand you the shovel. <laughs> look at it. You have a really attractive girl. Uh-huh. And you look at her two or three friends around her and you go, yeah, they're all right, but nothing like her. Va va boom. So, yeah, I mean, in a lot of ways, I think that there are uh, situations where a good looking girl prefers to have a less good looking group of girlfriends. Yeah. And uh, and let me say this, uh, fellas, watch who you try to hit on. OK, you may think. Well, they're friends, but you know what? She has her own thing. I might be able to, as they say, pull her. You know what? They talk. Women talk all the time. Mm-hmm. Talk, 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 talk. And you know what they'll be talking about? The fact that you made an idiot of yourself trying to hit on them. Well, so, and, and then this guy was already tagging the uh, bridesmaid. What was her maid of honor? Yeah, he was already tagging that long before they got the married. The planned their wedding. Yeah, the one who helped plan <laughs> yeah, the, the wedding, wedding through wedding the wedding planner. shower. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Through the wedding shower and well, all? Well, maybe it was part of the wedding plan. Yeah. yeah. That was part of <laughs> yeah. his plan. Yeah. Wow. And I wonder how the, the, the girl who was the wedding planner, uh, who was doing uh, this girl's husband-to-be, uh, oh, how did she feel about it? Oh, we, perfectly fine. It was, it was just her yeah, business tactic. That, that's just yeah. business as usual yeah. for her. That's how she gets yeah. a new client. That's right. Yeah. Referrals. Yeah. Because, you know, eventually <laughs> this relationship between him and his real girlfriend, bride-to-be, yeah. it's, it's going to fail, and then he's going to have to find somebody else to marry. So she gets more business. She plans that person's marriage and wedding shower as well. All right. Insane. Uh, happiness. That's nothing but happiness. We got to get to the uh, information you want to hear about with our Jack and Ron. Sleazy, trashy showbiz report. Well, let's get to it. Kerry Washington discovered that her dad is not her biological father. He is not the father. That's right, my friend. By the way, Maury is... <laughs> thinking about coming out of retirement yeah, for a special uh, DNA to see if Woody Harrelson and uh, Matthew McConaughey are brothers. Who would want Separated to at birth, I guess. Yeah, huh? well, you know, they could claim each other. Oh, well. Hey, there's a new show on uh, called Max, uh, on Max, rather, called Naked Attraction. You may have heard about this. Contestants choose potential dates by seeing them first completely naked. I'm all there, dude. And yes, it shows full frontal nudity. I'm really there now. I saw a clip. (laughs) It's on Max right now. You can go see it if you want. I I saw a bit of the clip. Do they block out anything on Max? No. No. no, And it's on HBO Max. Yeah. yeah. As long as it's not like intercourse, I think Max is fine with that. Yeah. 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 It's It's really artistic if you think about it. Exactly. And that's, you know, they were were talking about it. Uh, uh, Some looked okay. Uh, Some were like like that and others were real, <laughs> were real giant bell ringers. I want to so see the this, big bell ringers yeah, myself. Yeah, and they get the men and women. And uh they say, "Hey, I I I'm glad I saw this because I I would not have chosen this individual based upon what I've seen." Anyway, it's called Naked Attraction. Check it out. I just didn't <laughs> know that you had that skull and crossbones tattooed right in your pelvic region and maybe that would be the deterrent. Maybe keep possibly, you away. Yeah. Possibly. Hey, Usher will headline the Super Bowl halftime show. You know, as big as a show as that is, uh, they don't get any money f- for it. But 
he's coming out with a brand new album that will be released around the exact same time. Great promotion. Yeah. Hey, a guy with cerebral palsy missed Beyonce's show in Seattle because the plane he was taking could not accommodate his wheelchair. What so, did Queen Bee do? So all the Beehive folks got together, flew him to her show in Houston, and he had a chance to meet her personally. How awesome is that? Hey, Beyonce, I tell you, the two biggest tours, uh, Beyonce's tour and uh, Taylor, Taylor Swift Taylor. shows. Yeah. Taylor Swift. Yeah. yeah. And if, speaking of Taylor Swift, how about her at the Chiefs game? Up there yelling and, really and yelling screaming. Yeah. With Travis Kelsey's mom. Yeah. Sitting right there with yeah, her. Yeah. He, had, he invited her. And then they were so excited to beat the Bears. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> well, if you're going to invite her to a, a game, that's the one you want to invite her to. <laughs> but uh, then they showed them walking out together. They, they uh, had a restaurant shut the whole restaurant down so they would be just them. Apparently and they then, got in his convertible. I don't know what vehicle it was, but yeah. they had a convertible and they drove off together. You know, oh, I'm, nice. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, see, I'm Kelsey. I'm, I'm a Kelsey and I'm Taylor Swift. I'm in a convertible. Uh-uh. All right, finally. <laughs> Drew Carey said he'd pick up the tab for striking workers at Bob's Big Boy. His tab estimated between 400 to six hundred thousand dollars. What the hell did they eat? How many of them were there? Four? Well, now, now how long has this been going on? The oh, you mean for the whole time? Yeah. Oh, for I the whole thought time. it was one time. No, no, no. This Holy. is to pick up the tab because a lot of these folks are making the grand theft dough that maybe the big time writers are. Sure. You know, working on residuals and things of that nature, right. and they, you know, they have to eat too. So he picked up the tab six hundred thousand dollars, four hundred to six hundred thousand dollars. And uh, the strike has reached a tentative agreement at this particular point. Wonder if he can write that off on his taxes. Of course he yeah. can. Are you kidding me? Good move. Good move. Yeah. Hey, good move. That's your Hollywood update. All right. Great stuff there. Got to say hi to Sharita Barrett checking us out again today. Hey, Sharita, thanks for checking out the Jack and Ron podcast. Be sure to share this number one, the number one video podcast in America with everybody you know on your Facebook uh, page, your sharing device. Okay, Richard, by the way, why, before we go on to the next one, could you just maybe just check to see if we've gotten any any phone calls whatsoever? Yes. Yeah, maybe from Ryan Walters. But she's about to say he's yeah. going to give me a blanket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got the air cranking in here, no yeah, doubt about it. See. All right. No. Uh, no no calls yet. Nothing as of right Maybe now. Maybe you want to call us. Hey, Sharita, you could call. Uh, Lawrence Larson, you're watching. You we can call. We got a text message. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. From? Yeah. Laundry shirts are just $1 at American Cleaners from <laughs> 911 to 923. So that deal is already done. <laughs> so 923, that, came, that was. That came two, in this morning at 10 That came in this morning and that ended two days ago. Yeah. That ended Saturday. Way to go, American Cleaners. All right. <laughs> Who are not sponsored. Could they, hey, American Cleaners, can you go ahead and re, reissue that deal? I might bring some shirts by. All right, we've got, uh, oh, I know what we got to get to. Hey, hey, kids, guess what time it is? It's time for the dumbass joke of the day. Oh, there's a deal where we have three very cheesy jokes, and we ask Ron to pick one of the very cheesy jokes, uh, which means Ron gets to pick his cheese. Your three cheesy jokes to choose from today. Number one, drinking at the pub. Number two, the blonde bartender. Number three, the Mormon and the Irishman. Drinking at the pub, blonde bartender, Mormon and the Irishman. What do you want to go with here? Well, after some deep thought, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> let's go to the pub, man. You want to go to the pub? Let's go to the pub. All right. Let me make sure, let me make sure I got all this stuff organized here. Okay. An Irishman's been drinking at a pub all night. When he stands up to leave, he falls flat on his face. He tries to stand up one more time. No luck. Again, he falls flat on his face. He figures he'll crawl outside and get some fresh air and maybe just uh, hopefully sober him up. Once he's outside, he stands up. Sure enough, falls again on his face. Uh, decides to crawl four blocks home to his house. He gets to his house. He stands up and falls flat on his face, crawls through the door to his bedroom. When he reaches the bed, he tries one more time to stand up. This time he manages to pull himself upright, but he quickly falls right into bed. He's sound asleep as soon as his head hits the pillow. He awakens the next morning. His wife standing over him says, So, you've been out drinking again? He says, Why do you say that? And she says, Because the pub called. 
You left your wheelchair there again. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, speaking of drinking, let's get to this one. An old blind cowboy wanders into an all-girl biker bar by mistake. He finds his way to a bar stool, orders a shot of Jack Daniels. After sitting there for a while, he yells to the bartender, Hey, want to hear a blonde joke? And the bartender, female bartender, immediately gets silent, then says in a very husky voice, uh, before you tell that joke, cowboy, I think it's only fair, given that you're blind, that you should know five things. Number one, the bartender is a blonde girl with a baseball bat. The bouncer is a blonde girl with a billy club. I'm a six-foot-tall, 175-pound blonde woman with a black belt in karate. The woman sitting next to me is blonde and a professional weightlifter, and the lady to your right is blonde and a professional wrestler. Now think about it seriously, cowboy. Do you want to tell that blonde joke? And the blind cowboy thinks for a second, shakes his head and says, no, not if I'm going to have to explain it five times. <laughs> Sorry, blondes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> All right, here we go. Got one more for you. Lord have mercy. <laughs> a Mormon. A Mormon is seated next to an Irishman on a flight airline from London to the U.S. after the plane is airborne. Drink orders were taken. The Irishman asked for a whiskey, which was promptly brought to him and placed right in front of him. The flight attendant then asked the Mormon if he would like a drink, and he replied in disgust, I'd rather be savagely raped by a dozen whores than let liquor touch my lips. Right then, the Irishman handed his drink back to the attendant and said, Me too. I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> Come on. They're not bad, are they? Yeah, well. Were they that bad? No, I like the last one. You like the last one? Okay. Yeah. One out of three, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Hey, if I can hit one out of three, not bad. By the way, we got to say hi to Alan Nagy. Alan is watching. And uh, watching from work in Dodge City. Dodge hey, City, way Kansas. to go, Alan. There you go. Hey, share this with everybody you know. Uh, Sharita, Alan, uh, Lawrence, all you guys. Everybody share this number one video podcast in America with everybody you know. All right, shall we get to, uh, it's Tribon time? All right yeah, now. Good God. It is Tribon time? Yeah. Holy cow. All right, this is where we give you three words. You got to come up with one word that works with a three-year answer must match mine. Now, last week... We offered this one, ball, truck, place. Let me give you those three words one more time. Ball, truck, place. One word works with those three. The answer must match mine. Anybody? Anybody? Richard? Ron? Fire. What was that? Fire. Fire. Fireball. Fire. 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 Fire truck, fireplace. There you I'm go. Good at the fire, fire. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. All right, yeah. Man. Hey, yeah. hats off last to you, week, man. Though, right? yeah. What's that? That was last week, right? That was last week. Yeah. That was on. Now we've got a new one for you. Oh no wonder you got it. <laughs> well, I mean, that was last week. We <laughs> gave it week to, to you. Think about it. Oh, okay. We give you seven days to think about. All it. All right. I thought that was the one that we gave the answer to and everything <laughs> last week. Fire, fire. Richard, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Richard was pretty proud about that. Hey, here we go. Hey. All right, this is one for today. We give you seven more days to think about it. We'll come back September twenty fifth. A week from today with the answer. But the three words today, cloth, soup, blue. Cloth. I know this one. Soup, blue. Oh, really? You do? Mm -hmm. Lay it out for Jeez. us. You got it. Good God. How is he hey. getting them so quick? Right, wait a minute. Damn. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, there you have it. Get a clank. <laughs> well, I guess now we'll give you the answer to two tough trivia because I was kind of on the mark with this one. Um... Richard was a little off center. Wait. <laughs> so, what was the question again, Ron? How many first ladies <laughs> have been born outside of the United States of America? How many first ladies, for those who don't know, that means the wife of the president, uh, outside? I guess of we were both off on this. So because I said one. Could have been two. Yes. But is it two? It is two. Oh, Jack, right, so we, were, we split it. I, we I, split. I said both of you real close now. Melania, right? Yeah. Melania Trump. And who was the other one? Oh, we have to go way back for that one. Uh -huh. uh, that's Louisa. Who? L Louisa Adams. Oh, wife John of Adams? John Quincy. Adams. John wow, Quincy that's Adams. a throwback. Yeah, but that was way back then. But all of the first ladies after that, born in America until Melania Donald Trump, Trump. imported <laughs> Melania. Donald Trump, did, did he find her on the internet? 
Uh, huh? You know what? I, I don't know. Well, quite possibly. You know, she was doing some modeling. Yeah. And I showed you some of the pictures uh, that. It uh, hey, wasn't she. Uh, who was she? Miss Puerto Rican. Miss who? Miss who? Was she like a like this? Miss Puerto Rican. Was she Miss somebody? Miss, I Miss Slovenia. Not. That's where she's from. Slo Slovenia. Uh, yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. Uh, was she? Yeah. Well, I'll have to show you some pictures of her and and, and her prime and, and and her modeling. Oh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll see why Donald made you know an attempt to get her. And now all of a sudden, where she's living uh, most of the time now in New York, and uh, away from all of the hassle. And her thing is. That's his problem, not mine. And he's down there in Mar-a-Lago playing golf while she's in New York, right? Yeah. That's a great I'll, life. I'll, I'll be happy when all of this is, well, if it can be over. I, I'm, I'm happy when it's all over because it should have been all over when everybody said, no, nothing was rigged, you know, all of that. But yet and still, we still have people saying that it was. Yeah, there you go. And that's just where I'll win. All right, we got to wrap this up and say thanks to the fine folks at uh, Flash Hauler, F L A S H O L R.com, Flash Hauler.com. Uh, they're the ones that uh, support this program exclusively and uh, do a great job of moving stuff for you. They are the game changers in the moving industry. They've teamed up with Mom and Dad's House to help senior citizens move from their bigger, um, more roomy establishment to a uh, you know more downsized property mm -hmm. and they do it all for them hey don't forget too now if you have a lot of furniture they also can help you out with that with furniture storage we're talking about uh, uh, big units and portable storage as well flash holler has you covered definitely if you just need to move an ottoman or a sofa or a love seat from point a to point b they can do that too maybe your vehicle's too small to pick up that big screen tv at costco or wherever you're getting it they have drivers all over the city in all sized vehicles and you can contact flash holler by going to f-l-a-s-h-o-l-r flash holler.com they can take care of you all right i hope you uh have enjoyed this uh, alleged uh, number one video podcast in america remember uh the audio from this podcast is now dropped on wednesday It'll drop on all the podcast sites, iHeartMedia Podcast, Apple Podcast, mm -hmm. Spotify, Spreaker, Deezer. So whatever you didn't hear today and people are talking about, you'll be able to hear it for yourself starting Wednesday. And I believe speak, uh, Spreaker, is that the one that's going away? Yeah. Uh, Spreaker is the one that's uh, dissolved. Why? Why is it going away? I think they're just dissolving. They're they're merging with somebody else. Someone bought them out. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, but they're the, going the, away. Does the name Musk sound any? No. Okay. All the biggest are Musk. <laughs> all right. Well, we got to get out of here. Thanks to Richard also for doing such a great job uh, handling all the gear and being the executive producer of the podcast. And thanks to uh, Bob and uh, Tammy and Nancy and Jen, the uh, proprietors here at Othello's. Check out Othello's Italian Restaurant in Edmond and in Norman on Campus Corner. Remember, when you go do what you do, do it like Jack and Ron. Be the best. Give it 110, 120, 130% effort. Bye-bye, everybody. Good.